Hello, hello, my name is Masha Nuts, and today I want to share with you five simple friendship bracelets for beginners based on my book, The Beginner's Guide to Friendship Bracelets. The Beginner's Guide to Friendship Bracelets is a collection of tutorials specifically for beginners that takes you all the way from the basic knots to complex patterns. The book comes out on August 23rd in the US and about a month later worldwide. And it's open for pre-order now. If you pre-order, make sure to send a screenshot of your order to rockynock.com friendship to enter the giveaway. Today I'm going to be looking at some of the bracelets featured in my simple bracelets chapter, which is chapter five, that includes a bunch of different simple bracelets ranged from very simple to a little bit more complex, but all of them are very much beginner friendly. So let's have a look at some of the bracelets featured here, starting with the first one, which is the vertical wave. Up first is the vertical wave bracelet. The vertical wave bracelet is probably the easiest alpha bracelet that you can create. It's super simple to make, it only includes forward and backward knots, and it results in a really cool and unique looking bracelet. So two things I've already done, you first start by determining the width of your bracelet, mine is going to be 10 strings wide, and then you secure it to your workplace. I've just taped mine down to my table. You want to leave enough string at the top so that you can go back and create ties out of later. I'm going to leave something around 10 to 15 centimeters. Your strings should also be roughly about a meter in length. Choose the two colors that you want to alternate within your bracelet. Mine are going to be black and this pastel rainbow multicolored string. I find that using multicolored string within the vertical wave bracelet is a great way to spice things up. These strings are also going to be about a meter in length. You will be replacing them as you go along because these are the leading strings and put one off to one side and one off to the other side of the base strings. And then of course the rest of this section of the chapter is filled with photo tutorials on how to create this bracelet. So you can find all of the information you need on this design within the book. But of course here with you today I will be explaining this in video form. We're going to start off with the left leading string, let's put the right leading string off to the side, we're not going to use it for now. And we're just going to do a row of forward knots with this leading string along each of the base strings. I do of course have a separate tutorial for basic knots which goes over these knots in great detail, but let's recap really quickly. You're going to fold the leading string over the base string so that the shape kind of resembles a four. You then put your finger in the loop under the base string, grab the leading string with your nail, twist it, pull it through, and then pull it up. That's one half of a forward knot, you do the same exact thing to complete the knot. That is one knot done. We now grab the next string and do another forward knot onto this string. And we continue doing forward knots on all of the bass strings until we reach the last bass string. All right, now that the first leading string is on the right side, we're going to go back with that leading string. Starting with the bass string that is on the right, we're going to do backward knots with the leading string onto each of these bass strings individually until we reach the other end. So we're bringing that string forward and then back again. So once again, just a quick recap on backward knots. They are exactly mirrored to forward knots. So you take the leading string, you bring it over in the shape of an inverse four. You stick your finger out, put it in the loop under the bass string, grab the leading string with your nail, twist it and pull it through. You then carefully tighten the knot and that is one half of a backward knot. We repeat the same motion again to complete that backward knot. And then we continue doing backward knots one by one until we reach the end of the bass strings. There we go, the first two rows are complete and you can see that this one is a little bit wonky. Top tip, using a ruler and gently pushing the knots up so that they resemble more of a horizontal line can really help your alpha bracelets. So that's it with the first leading string, we're going to put it off to the side for now. We're going to grab the next leading string, that's the one to the right, and we're going to do the same thing. This leading string is going to do an entire row of backward knots along each of these base strings. When it reaches the other side, we're going to go back in a row of forward knots. 
So the same thing we did at the top except mirrored. So first backward knots to the left and then forward knots to the right. And there we go, that's pretty much it. To repeat the pattern, you grab the leading string on the left and do a row of forward knots, and then a row of backward knots. Then again, you grab the leading string on the right, do a row of backward knots, and then a row of forward knots. And you continue repeating those steps until the bracelet reaches the length that you want. So eventually, as you're making the bracelet, you're gonna run out of string. This string is getting really short and I need to replace it. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna tie a separate string somewhere nearby to your bracelet. I just put it off to the right and then put washi tape over it so you can't see the tape, but it is there. Next, we're gonna do what's called the flat alpha technique. Now I have a separate tutorial which is very in depth on this topic, I'll leave that linked in the card and in the description. But basically, to switch strings, you bring the old leading string up, bring the new leading string in, do one half of your knot, I'm doing backward knots this time, onto the next bass string. Grab that previous leading string and point it in the direction that we're making knots in. So we're going to the left, so I'm pointing it to the left. Position it sort of under the new leading string and make the second half of the backward knot with the new leading string sort of positioning that previous leading string in between the knots. So it's essentially going through it. Now that old leading string just pops back and off to the side and you can continue making your row with the new leading string. Once you've made a few more rows, you can literally just go back and cut it straight from the back. I prefer to switch strings somewhere in the middle of the bracelet because it can be quite tricky doing it on the sides, but I do have another in-depth video specifically about switching strings on the sides if you ever find yourself in that position. I'll leave that linked in the card and in the description as well. All right, so next we're gonna look at the candy stripe bracelet. The candy stripe bracelet is probably the simplest normal pattern that you can make, and it's one that a lot of beginners start by making. In fact, the candy stripe was the first bracelet that I created. I don't typically recommend starting with the candy stripe. I would recommend starting with a chevron bracelet, the classic chevron, for which I have a separate tutorial, which will be linked in the card and in the description, purely because the chevron uses both forward and backward knots together, while the candy stripe uses only the forward knots or only the backward knots. And in theory, you should probably start with the one that's simpler, right? The one that only uses one type of knots. And that works for some people, but for me, for example, I made candy stripes for so long, exclusively with forward knots, that by the time I started learning how to make backward knots, it took me a really long time to get used to making them. Which is why I recommend starting with the classic chevron, because that way you make both forward and backward knots and you get used to them at the same time together. So you don't end up preferring one over the other. In fact, I've been making bracelets for 13 years. I still prefer forward knots a little bit because of this. But in any case, let's talk about the candy stripe. So in the book, I start the candy stripe with a beginner's loop. That is definitely something you can do. You make the beginner's loop as normal and then arrange your strings in pairs with the colors as you want them to appear within your bracelet. However, for this tutorial, I decided not to make the loop and instead I just cut my strings and taped them down. If you're gonna make the loop, cut one string per color and make it about two meters in length. If you're not gonna make the loop like me, cut two strings per color and make them one meters instead. If you're not making a loop like me, make sure you leave enough string off to the side, minus slightly off camera, to make ties with once you're done. So in the beginner's guide to friendship bracelets, I then go in and I explain how to make this bracelet in photo tutorials, but of course here today I'm going to explain it to you in video form. So we've already arranged our strings in the order that we want them to appear in the bracelet, and you might notice that we're arranging them in pairs. You don't have to do this, you can arrange your strings one by one. The more strings of the same color you put together, the thicker that stripe will be. I want my stripes to be two rows thick, which is why I'm putting two strings per color for each stripe. There is only one repeating row to this pattern. You take the outermost string on the left, which for me is this purple string, and you're gonna do forward knots along all of these strings one by one. So one forward knot on that purple string, one forward knot on that yellow string, and so on. And of course, as I mentioned already, I have a separate tutorial on basic knots, which you can look at for more details on how to make forward knots, but of course, I'll remind you here, you take the string you're making the knot with, put it over the string you're making the knot onto, put your finger into the creative loop under that string, grab the other string with your nail, twist it, pull it through, and then pull it up, and then do the exact same thing to finish off that knot. And then of course, continue making forward knots with that same string along the rest of the strings here. There we go, and that purple string is now all the way to the right. 
As I said, there is just one repeating row, so the second row is exactly the same. You take the outermost string and you make forward knots along the rest of these strings one by one. And of course, you also make a forward knot on that new purple string that is on the right. There we go, now two rows of that purple is done and you can see that the next color is yellow. So continuing, you would take the outermost string on the left, which is yellow, and make a row of forward knots with that yellow string along all of these strings individually. And you continue doing that, grabbing the outermost string on the left, going in a row of forward knots, so on and so forth until the bracelet reaches the length that you want. Next, let's have a look at the zipper bracelet. The zipper bracelet is super quick and fun to make. It also just creates such a cool look. I absolutely love this one. So how do we make it? Well, first let's start off by choosing two colors for the zipper itself and one color for the strings in the middle. The strings in the middle won't be visible in the bracelet itself, but it will be visible in the ties. So choose the color with that in mind. In the book, I do an overhand knot on the strings before I attach them to my work surface, which you can absolutely do, or you can just tape your strings down like I did now. Just don't forget to leave enough string before you tape your string down, mine is just off camera to make ties out of later. So these are the two colors that I chose, yellow and purple, and these are gonna be the strings in the center. I'm gonna start by taking the strings on the left side, both of them at the same time, and the strings in the middle, both of them at the same time. And I'm going to do a forward backward knot with both of these yellow strings at the same time onto both of the base strings, the pink strings at the same time. And again, a forward backward knot starts just like a forward knot. We pull that string up, and then we finish it off just like a backward knot. And again, we're using both of the yellow strings on both of the pink strings at the same time, and that results in one big chunky knot. Next, we put the yellow strings off to the side. We grab the strings on the right, which are purple, and we're gonna do the mirror version of this. We're gonna do a backward forward knot with both of those purple strings onto both of those pink strings at the same time. Again, resulting in a chunky knot and we're starting to see how this zipper is going to be formed. That's really it, it's literally just two knots. But let me make them one more time so you can really start to see the zipper forming. So there you go, you can already see the zipper forming and that's pretty much it, you just repeat those two steps. The strings on the left do a forward backward knot on the strings in the middle, the strings on the right do a backward forward knot on the strings in the middle. And you continue doing that until the bracelet reaches the length that you want. Moving on to the Chinese staircase bracelet, which is an incredibly fun bracelet to make as well that only uses one type of knot. It is just the forward knot. This is a great bracelet for beginners to make and it comes out looking really cool as well because of the staircase effect. So let's get to it. Of course, we start off by choosing our colors. I went with three colors here. I'm also going with three colors for this tutorial. The more colors you use, the thicker the bracelet is going to be and the longer your strings are going to be. I only use three colors, so I'm only gonna make my strings to be about a meter in length. So attach your strings to your workspace and don't forget to leave enough strings left over to make ties out of once you're done. Grab one string out of the bundle. It can be any color that you like and make a forward knot with that string onto the entire bundle. In my case, that's two strings. So we're gonna make a forward knot onto both of these strings at the same time. Once again, I have a tutorial on basic knots which explains forward knots in detail, but just as a reminder, the leading string is gonna go over the string you're making the knot onto in the shape of a four, four for forward knot. You put your finger in the loop under the strings, grab that string with your nail, twist it, pull it through, pull it up. That is one half of a forward knot. Do the same motion once again to complete that forward knot. And there you go. That's really the entirety of the bracelet. You just continue making forward knots with that same string over these same strings over and over again until you decide that that section is long enough and you can already sort of start noticing that staircase movement happening here. And you will notice that your string kind of starts to twist. It's going kind of further back. You might wanna sort of twist your bracelet a little bit, bring that string to the left so that it's easy for you to work with and you're just gonna continue making forward knots like this, going on and on until you decide, okay, that's enough, I wanna switch colors now. And now if you decide to switch colors, you're just gonna bring that pink string into the bundle, grab the next string you want to switch to. Mine is just gonna be the yellow. I pull that out and I start making forward knots with the yellow onto the bundle now, including the pink string. So again, just a knot like that. 
onto both of these strings at the same time and I'm just gonna continue doing that until I decide that I am done with this bundle and I want to switch colors. Now, of course, the more knots you make, the bigger that stripe of color is going to be, but it's completely up to you how big or how little you want that stripe to be. And that's pretty much it. You just continue making forward knots onto the entire bundle of strings, switching colors, whatever you see fit, until the bracelet reaches the length that you want. And finally, let's have a look at the rag rug bracelet. My God, that was a mouthful. It took me like seven takes. The term rag rug bracelet is used to describe a bunch of different types of bracelets and this is only just one of them, but I absolutely love this variation of it. This bracelet is super easy to make. It's really fun to make. It comes out with a really fun looking design as well. And it's a great use of scrap strings. So if you've got any strings left over from previous bracelets, this is a great way to use them up. So let's talk about it. First, you want to decide how wide the bracelet's gonna be. I decided to go with six strings. Obviously the more strings you use, the wider the bracelet is going to be. Cut those strings to be roughly about a meter in length and secure them to your workspace, leaving enough string off to the side to create ties out of later. Then grab your first string cutting. If this is a scrap thread, it'll probably be very short or you can cut strings yourself. It doesn't have to be a long string. Grab a piece of tape and tape that string somewhere nearby to the left of your bracelet. And then we're just gonna do one row of forward knots with this pink string onto each of these base strings individually. And again, I have a separate tutorial for basic knots, but the forward knot looks like this. That's one half, and then repeating that same motion for the second half. There we go. And continue making forward knots along each of these strings individually. Using a ruler to push your knots up or down to make sure that they are in a horizontal line can be a great way and can help you with your alpha bracelets. So I highly recommend doing that. There you go, that's pretty much it. You, you just repeat doing that. Once you've done that with this string, you grab the next string, mine will be yellow, take a piece of tape, tape it down, and then do a row of forward knots with the next string. And you continue doing this until the bracelet reaches the length that you want. Once your bracelet is done, you're gonna have a bunch of string kind of coming off from the sides. You're just gonna take some scissors and cut them off to be one same length. And this is what the result ends up looking like. As I said, I think this is a really fun and cool bracelet to make. And there we go, those were five simple bracelets for beginners. In the beginner's guide to friendship bracelets, there are plenty more beginner friendly bracelets that you could make, as well as plenty of other tutorials on how to read patterns, how to make various starts and ends, and a lot more. As I said, the book comes out on August 23rd in the US and about a month later everywhere else, and it's available for pre-order now. And just a reminder, don't forget to send a screenshot of your order confirmation if you do pre-order to my publisher at rockynook.com friendship to enter the giveaway. Also, before I go, I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters. Thank you so, so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. And if you also want to become a supporter of this channel, the link to my Patreon is in the description. But in any case, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.